Hey everyone, Couch Investor back to another video for today. So let's discuss the short report that came out from the Bear Cave on Thursday saying that because Mr. Beast is selling chocolates, you should short Hershey. So this is exactly what he said on Twitter. It's simple, Mr. Beast is killing it with his chocolate brand Feastables and will be making a major dent in Hershey very soon. Starting this year, I believe Feastables is going to take material share. My rough estimates, $500 million in 2023 sales and $1.5 billion in 2024 sales would very clearly make a dent in Hershey and even larger in 2025 onwards. Now let me ask you two simple questions. There is already Mr. Beast Burger. Did that put McDonald's out of business? The answer here is no. Logan Paul's and KSI's Prime Drink. Did that put a dent in Coke and Pepsi's business? The answer yet again here is no. Now for those of you that aren't familiar with the Bear Cave, it's the same writer that wrote about Palantir and Airbnb earlier this year, basically saying that Palantir is just an AI consultant company and Airbnb, well, has zero mode, everybody can do Airbnb and nothing special there, high fees, people complaining on Twitter, so that's why you should short the company. Now I'll just add here some extra details. People usually go on Twitter to complain, right? You're not really going to call customer service to wish them a good day or tell them how good your product is. Usually when you have a good experience, you have a good experience, you move on. When you have a bad experience, you want the whole world to know about it. So sometimes using those isolated cases to make your point to short a company doesn't really make that much sense. But then again, when you promise your subscribers who are paying over $600 a year for a newsletter, when you're promising them two reports each month, maybe sometimes that becomes a bit too much and so the quality goes down, clickbait has to go up to drive more traffic. So in this case, saying that there's a new competitor in this huge market and using the name just Mr. Beast to make a point that this is a valuable short, to me, makes no sense. Now, I'll go over Hershey later in this video. I'll talk about the launch of Feastables as well. So, Mr. Beast, arguably the most popular YouTuber to ever exist, has launched his own chocolate brand called Feastables. Now, it has had incredible success and will continue to grow because right now it's available in the United States in plenty of stores, by the way, online and offline as well. And I do believe that they're going to launch in the UK pretty soon. So yes, expect growth there. I don't know what the costs are for producing these chocolates. I don't know who is producing these chocolates because I don't think, well, I highly doubt that he built his own real chocolate factory because the capex there would be insane. So he needs those chocolates to sell. How does he promote that? Well, he sponsors his own videos because his videos reach hundreds of millions of views. So you can't really always, well, rely on finding a sponsor because the budget is going to be pretty big. So sometimes you will see him sponsoring his own videos by plugging in Feastables. And so that drives sales for Feastables, which drives revenue through the company. You can reinvest it in Feastables or reinvest it in his own videos. I believe his last video he published on his Instagram story saying that it cost him $3 million, only made 200,000 or so through YouTube revenue. So go buy Feastables in order for him to make these types of videos. Of course, it's a bit more complicated than that, but that's the big picture here. Now, how did he grow his brand so quickly? Of course, being the biggest YouTuber out there or the most popular out there helps a lot. But it did the Willy Wonka cutting. The Charlie and the Chocolate Factory aspect came into play, the real one. Putting golden tickets into the chocolate bars. If you find a golden ticket, you get to participate in one of his videos. Genius, genius marketing play. Of course, this is driving a lot, a lot of sales. All the kids want to be in a Mr. Beast videos. And this is also a very important aspect the target audience. Mr. Beast's target audience is probably 99% kids, 1%, let's call it, young adults. Hershey's is kids, young adults, parents. Well, with kids, it's parents as well because the parents have to buy the chocolates for the kids. So there is that. But again, going back to the golden ticket aspect, he can do this over and over and over again. It's a win-win for him. It drives sales for the chocolates and then will drive views for the videos as well. So don't be surprised if he tries this trick again later on. Now, 
With the eventual success of Feastables, how will this impact a company like Hershey? Well, here are some quick key facts from Hershey. $10.4 billion in net sales, number two in the US snacking business, number one in US confection, 19,000 employees and a 19% annualized three-year shareholder return. These are key facts as reported from 2022. And if you wanted a better picture of how the company is doing right now, you can clearly see that this company is still growing revenues quite nicely. It's a company that has a $50.2 billion market cap. Free cash flow in the last 12 months, $1.87 billion. Return on equity over 50%. Gross profit margin, yes, have been coming down, but still over 40%. And I do agree that the stock itself is not cheap at all. 25.2 times 4 PE for a company that is expected to grow EPS only 11.5%. In fiscal year 2023, 8.3% in fiscal year 2024, and 7.14% in fiscal year 2025 is not one of the cheapest out there. When you look at sales, that's expected to grow 8% fiscal year 2023, 4.5% in 2024, and 3.54% in fiscal year 2025. Now, they themselves said last quarter that they are expected to grow net sales by approximately 8%, reported earnings per share approximately 15%, and adjusted earnings per share approximately 11%. Oh, and for those of you that aren't familiar with Hershey, this is basically their portfolio of brands. So yes, the majority is chocolate, but you get gummies and salties as well. Now, if you're enjoying this type of video so far, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have not, would really appreciate that. And if you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash couch investor. Now, if we go back to their earnings call, they say here they see strong demand for gum and mint products, so the non-chocolate part of the business. Retail sales in both categories grew 20 to 25% in the first quarter and are now ahead of pre-pandemic levels. Hershey's growth of 30% outpaced the category, resulting in a refreshment share gain of 110 basis points in the quarter. This performance builds on previous share gains over the past several years, resulting in an overall refreshment share gain of 250 basis points versus pre-pandemic levels. As they discussed in the recent Investor Day, expanding their presence in non-chocolate candy is a strategic priority for us, giving strong consumer demand, particularly in the gummy segment. Our investment in innovation and media in this space are paying dividends, with Q1 retail sales growth of almost 19% for Twizzlers and over 15% for their Jolly Rancher brands. Now, they also expect this combined with our increased investment in advertising to improve their market share performance as they progress through the year. Does this sound like a company that is struggling or a company that is still continuing to innovate and growing? Now, coming back to the Mr. Beast part, in my opinion, it's not a, oh, Mr. Beast will grow and so Hershey's will become smaller. No, I just think that the market is just becoming bigger and bigger and so Hershey's will grow and Mr. Beast will grow as well. I do agree that Mr. Beast being Mr. Beast has some advantage when it comes to, well, convincing kids that go to Walmart, for example, and are looking at Hershey chocolate or Mr. Beast chocolate, they will more likely choose Mr. Beast chocolate because it is Mr. Beast and he has fans. Now the Bear Cave writer made a good point Mr. Beast has fans, Hershey has customers. So loyalty here lies probably with Mr. Beast. But then again, if let's say Hershey sees that Mr. Beast is a huge success, I've seen some people already writing down in the comment, they will just buy Feastables. Well, I think that right now it's, they've made it pretty clear that Feastables is not for sale. And so Hershey can take the other path, right? Choose another YouTuber that is pretty famous and give them a chocolate bar or a gummy or whatnot and promote it through their channels. Of course, they won't get the reach that Mr. Beast gets, but they can try out the YouTube influencer tactic themselves. They can try out the golden ticket tactic themselves. NFL ticket, NBA pass, you name it. They can do whatever they want. It's Hershey, they have enough money. It's a $50 billion company. Don't forget that. So bottom line, to say that Hershey is a short just because Mr. Beast has launched chocolate bars, to me, makes absolutely no sense. I think both of them can coexist. 
Full disclaimer, I have eaten Hershey chocolate. I'm yet to get my hands on feastable chocolate. When I go to the United States, I'll try it out and maybe do a video about that as well. So that will be it for this video. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.